Hi everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I'm an American expat for the past 13 years, and in this video we are going to be examining why British Columbia, Canada is one of the safest places in all of Canada during the COVID-19 crisis. But not only is British Columbia one of the safest spots in Canada, it's also one of the safest spots in all of North America and Western Europe with its COVID-19 relief. Now there's a specific reason why British Columbia has been able to excel with its COVID-19 relief and we're going to reveal that reason in today's video. Now we're going to start today's video off by looking at this graph that was recently published by British Columbia's government and you can clearly see that BC has some very low rates of COVID-19 when compared to some of the other places around the world. We certainly see the United States and some of the most severely affected countries like Spain, Italy, and UK are very high on this graph, but even the rest of Canada, that most notably would be Ontario and Quebec, which have had very high rates of COVID-19. You know, all of these countries and places are very high on this graph, but we can see that British Columbia is much lower. So there's a specific reason why British Columbia has done so good, but just how good has the COVID-19 relief been in British Columbia? Let's look further at those numbers. Now in this graph, we can see that the total number of cases of COVID-19 in British Columbia is just over 2,400. And you can see that the vast majority of those, well over 1,800, have been fully recovered from the disease. That leaves British Columbia with just around 400 active cases right now, and we're looking at total deaths around 140. New cases you can see is very, very low on this, uh, on this graph. In the last few weeks, it's been in the single digits every day. Now, if we look at this graph, we can clearly see that British Columbia has done a great job in responding to COVID-19. However, two months ago, British Columbia was actually feared to potentially be one of the most devastated areas with COVID-19. Now, the reason for that is because British Columbia is home to Vancouver, the largest city in Western Canada. The beautiful city of Vancouver is actually considered by many Canadians to be the gateway for Canada into Asian. And we can look at this Vancouver global trade map and we can see the number of direct flights that are really coming from Asia, from some of the biggest hotspots there, South Korea, Japan, certainly mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, even as far as India, Malaysia, Singapore. You know, there's a tremendous amount of daily flights coming from Asia to Vancouver, you know, so a lot of people really feared, look, once COVID-19 started to spread, potentially Vancouver's gonna get really hit hard. There's a very large Asian community here, but actually that might be the reason why British Columbia has done so good in this response. To further illustrate my point, I'm gonna take you to Italy now, and we're gonna to go to the Tuscan city of Prato to examine uh, some further details. Now here we are in Italy, just northwest of Florence. There's a beautiful town called Prato, and Prato is actually home to 50,000 ethnic Chinese citizens that are living there in Prato. Uh, Prato is known for its textiles, and for many years they've had a tremendous amount of Chinese immigration there. And there was an article published in the South China Morning Post, that's a newspaper in Hong Kong last month, and it simply says, why Prato, home to Italy's biggest single Chinese community, is remarkably unscathed when it comes to the COVID-19 problem. Now the article goes on to state that Prato's Chinese community went into a full lockdown from the end of January. That was a full three weeks before Italy's first recorded infection. Now, if we go on to read the article, there's some really some great nuggets of information, and here's one of them. This is from Renzo Berti, the top state official, health official for that area, which does include Florence as well. And he says that we Italians feared that the Chinese of Prato were to be the problem. Instead, they actually did much better than us. He goes on to state that among Chinese residents in Prato, there isn't even a single case of COVID contagion. The ethnic Chinese do make up about a quarter of Prado's population, and the senior health official there, uh, Mr. Birdie, does credit them with bringing down the entire town's infection rate to almost half the Italian average. 62 cases per 100,000 inhabitants versus 115 for the country. Chinese there knew what was coming and they spread the word amongst themselves and also the other Italians in Prato. They simply said to stay home. Again, this was a full three weeks before Italy recorded their first case. So a lot of people didn't really listen to those warnings. 
So as the Italians headed to ski slopes and they crowded into cafes and bars as normal, the Chinese inhabitants of Prado had seemingly disappeared. Its streets, still festooned with the Lunar New Year's decorations, were semi-deserted and the shops were closed. Now after reading this article, we can see that the Chinese residents of Prado helped reduce the number of infections in that particular town by a factor of one half. That's a tremendous amount of people that potentially were saved because of the Chinese ability to lock down and quarantine by themselves. And they did that well before there was an infection rate. Now let's bring it back to British Columbia, Canada, and we're gonna see a very similar thing. Now for those of you that don't know, Vancouver is an extremely diverse city. There's many different ethnicities here, but Asians make up between 30 to 40% of the populations. If you've ever flown into Vancouver International Airport, you would have visited Richmond, British Columbia. Richmond is actually the fourth largest city in British Columbia, and up to 70% of its residents have a Chinese background. So this is where we're looking at a very similar thing to Prato, Italy. What we saw in Richmond is, is that there were many families here, many Chinese family that started pulling their kids from local schools as early as late January. Again, this was before Canada had recorded their first case of COVID-19. However, many Chinese people decided to quarantine at home. They started pulling their kids from schools. They started shutting down their restaurants. You know, they already went into a full quarantine and lockdown, very much following their brothers and sisters and their fellow countrymen back home in China. That's exactly what China did. And to give you some context as well, we have to remember that when China went into a full countrywide lockdown, there was just over 500 active cases of COVID-19. Now to further illustrate my point, I wanna take you to one of the largest Asian supermarkets in British Columbia. This is the TNT supermarket. What was interesting is, is that when other grocery stores were open and business was as usual, you know, TNT supermarket already started having security guards out front. They were the first supermarket, the first business in British Columbia to say, look, you have to have mandatory face masks to enter into the building. In addition to that, we're only gonna have X amount of people in it at this at one time. As a result, there was very large queues to get into TNT supermarket, you know, and everybody that was in there was wearing masks, was wearing gloves. They were really practicing their social distancing well before this became, you know, the norm that all of us are now doing. Now in conclusion, as we wrap up this video, I wanna say that British Columbia on a whole has done very good in responding to COVID-19, most importantly because they got ahead of the curve before the curve was here. You see, we've been always been hearing this phrase of, we need to flatten the curve. But what happens if you get ahead of the curve even before the curve is, exists? And that's exactly what has happened in British Columbia, cities like Prato, where these communities actually start quarantining well before the first case gets in. That's when you can really flatten that curve and you can, and you can see that the curve never really even takes off. And that's why you just have a very minimal curve you know, and very minimum uh, infection rates. So as a result, I really think that we should be thankful for the Chinese community here because obviously they're staying connected to what's happening in Asia. They know exactly what's going on and they were the first ones to really show everybody else. And this is exactly what you know the Italian um, health, health official had alluded to, is that we were, and in the beginning, we were worried that the Chinese community were going to be the worst affected. In reality, they were the best prepared and, it actually, and, and they actually taught us how to respond to this. Now my final goal for this video is just to illustrate that when we open our minds up and we're open to learning from other cultures, it could actually help save lives. And that is the biggest thing. I mean, I know a lot of people right now are very angry, you know, about COVID-19. Businesses have been ruined, people have been unemployed, you know, people are struggling financially, and a lot of people are looking to put blame. And unfortunately, Western, you know, media is saying, look, we need to blame China. China needs to be held responsible for this. But the reality is, is that a virus can come from anywhere in the world. And as of right now in 2020, our world is so interconnected. You know, we have Chinese, we have Chinese communities all over the world, but we also have Americans all over the world and Canadians and Australians and Europeans. I mean, our world is so interconnected with all of these daily flights and movings that no matter what we were going to do, no matter where this virus was to happen, it was bound to start spreading around the world because that's exactly what viruses do. They spread. So I want this video to be proof that we can in fact learn from other cultures, we can learn from each other, and that the only way through this very difficult situation is to embrace our fellow neighbors, you know, Let's get through this. If we, have, if we haven't been able to flatten the curve, let's get through this. There's brighter days ahead. So let's stay positive and we'll see you guys in the next video.